What's up, everybody? It's Fireplace Friday. I'm Jeremy with Flues Brothers Chimney Service. Uh, just uh, doing a little snippet here. If you hear a lot of banging in the background, it's because we're doing a little remodeling up in the loft here at Flues Brothers World Headquarters, and they're doing a great job. But uh, I want to point this out. This was a job we did, uh, the guys did the other day. And uh, what is this stuff? What is this stuff? Well, what this is, it's a flexible gas line that is uh, used... Uh, nowadays in lieu of the solid pipe gas line because the cool thing about this it comes in a big spindle a big spool and you can run it it's flexible you can get around areas and stuff you don't have to put a hundred fittings on and everything but there's dangers to this stuff if you have somebody that hasn't been properly trained and knowledgeable little things can happen we installed some gas logs went to light them up and after we lit them up a couple times we kept on smelling gas and we're like what is going on so we went over and retested the wall valve. We had tested it when we came out and inspected uh, before we installed the gas logs and everything. And we didn't catch anything at that time. Well, we had used the gas so much that we found, okay, there is a gas leak and we're finding it on the floor. So we went down and this is a newly remodeled area of the home, w crawled into the crawl space and got up and found that this line was leaking and it was hidden. It was under insulation and all this stuff, you know, so a standard inspection. I mean, we can't be tearing into walls and stuff like that during just a basic inspection. That would be what's called a level three inspection, but we can't, you know, it, we, it, we basically see what we can see in areas we can, in area, areas we can see. So of course this wasn't caught because it was in a crawl space in the basement, buried under a bunch of stuff and you really didn't catch it until you used it for a while. So we crawled under there and uh, uh, we said, well, homeowner's out of town. This is obviously a danger. Let's go ahead and replace it. And when we replaced it, you can see wh whoever installed it, you're not supposed to put this kind of bend in it. And it was just mangled to death. And when they did, when they did the installing correctly, it ended up with a slice. So this was leaking that much gas into a crawl space every time they use a fireplace and they hadn't used it a whole lot since they had it put in but it was leaking gas into that crawl space and if we wouldn't have caught that that crawl space could fill up with gas and then there's a furnace down there and that furnace has a little igniter when it comes on and that could spell catastrophe now who is at blame for that would it be us because we did an inspection and it's not like we didn't catch it we can't catch every little area you know whenever someone inspects something they can't be tearing into walls and getting into basements and digging in insulation and everything honestly whoever installed this originally is to blame they're obviously novice um and that is becoming kind of a bigger problem in all industries that you're getting a lot of uh, people that don't have a lot of experience, they're not getting trained properly, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you look around, if you've driven down the road, there's a help wanted sign on every single building. You can't throw a rock, you can't go outside and throw a rock without hitting a help wanted sign. So what's happening is, is these companies are uh, hiring a lot, of, a lot of people right now, we are too, but what they're missing out on is they're missing out on the training aspect of it. And you got to keep on training. You got to keep on checking everybody's work. You got to make sure everybody's doing a good job because what people don't know is we don't know. These homeowners didn't know that that guy that installed this obviously didn't know how to run this type of gas line because I'm not a plumber, but I can tell you from what we do, what little gas work we do, that is not right. This that They are not supposed to bend like that, especially that close to a fitting. So moral of the story is, is, uh, it's there's a lot of new people getting into the trades right now um a lot of people that are getting some training which is good a lot of training is even better um but times are changing it's it's hard to find those uh those seasoned veterans that have been doing this for a long time um so you as a homeowner uh, want to definitely make sure that you're using a good qualified company that has a lot of certifications and training and proof of training and licensing. And don't just ask people. Always follow up and go, hey, can you show me this? Or you go online and you check the credentials. Make sure you're using. 
Um, there's uh, chimney sweep credentials. You've got the CCP uh, put on through the National Chimney Sweep Guild. You've got the NFI, which is the National Fireplace Institute, which is uh, kind of covers a lot of the hearth retailers and shops. Great. Uh, great information there. I've got several uh, NFI certifications. And then you have the CSIA, which is the Chimney Safety Institute, Institute of America, which has been around uh, for quite a while and uh, offers training uh, programs. There. And all three of those are excellent, excellent training. And then you have little specialized uh, training like fire um, certification and I'm sure there's some others that I'm missing out on but what have you there's tons of education out there and then on top of it uh, being licensed right in your local municipality I had uh, eight hours worth of classes um, just the other day that I have to keep up on I have to keep up a certain amount for my Johnson County licensing and I actually ran into another chimney company there. There's only three companies I know of in Kansas City, three out of probably 20 um, companies that actually have licensing. And what people don't understand about licensing is, is licensing is forced education. It's basically, hey, it's just like these certifications that we have uh, in, in our industry. They're, they're specialty licensing, especially certifications that are industry specific. And then you have the general ones that cities want you to have municipalities want you to have and the whole reason it exists is to raise the bar make sure things are being done right if it needs a permit pull a permit if someone you know someone needs to put a second set of eyes on it or what have you from the city and check something then great but the biggest thing the biggest reason that licensing exists is education keeping education hours just like nurses do just like doctors do all these people it doesn't matter how long you've been in it these professional trades you have to maintain you have to keep on getting education the education never stops when i was at the uh, seminar the few classes i took really didn't have a lot to do um with uh with our industry um i'm planning on probably teaching a few classes for johnson county because i see a lot of stuff that contractors need to know but there are still good classes. All information is good information. I took a couple of classes on concrete and failures, which we do with some concrete. We do, you know, concrete crowns and stuff, and I can apply all that towards it. But it expands my brain. The knowledge is the one thing nobody can ever take from you. And it's the best investment you'll ever make in yourself is knowledge. So you want to make sure it doesn't matter if someone's been doing it for 50 years. A lot of stuff thing changes over 50 years. Maybe they haven't been doing it right for 50 years. You want to use somebody that has that education, certification, exactly, all of that stuff. Um, because that's what causes people to grow. I've been in this industry for 22 years and I'm still taking classes, still taking all this stuff. My guys taking classes, I share that knowledge with my guys as well. We have trainers that come in, everything else. So you wanna make sure that you're using uh, a good qualified, certified, licensed, all the above, and you're checking their credentials because I cannot believe how many people say, you are certified, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And they're not, you know? So yeah, people lie to you. Sometimes they're ignorant to that their certifications within an industry or licensing within an industry, et cetera. So you wanna make sure just like if you were hiring somebody, you want to do a background check. You want to make sure the person that you're getting is the person or the, the person that you interviewed is the person that you're getting and that, you know, there's no skeletons in the closet. You don't want, you want to make sure you can insure and make sure they can drive one of your vehicles properly and everything. And if you don't own a business, you want to make sure that anybody that you're hiring or what have you actually has those credentials. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be uh, taboo. It should just be something here. Uh, you, uh, hey, do you have workman's comp and liability insurance? Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Can I just get a certificate? I don't have to be added to the plan or any of that other stuff that people think, but proof of the certificate would be nice. So, uh, and all these things should just be transparent. There's nothing to hide. Like when we come out and do a, a chimney inspection, we're taking photos. We're taking photos of everything. When we, when we found this leak, we started clicking photos. You know, we want people to be in the know of what we found or whatever. There's nothing to hide. Uh, we didn't cause this problem. We didn't go in there and down there and bend the gas line and whack it with a hammer and ah, ha, ha, yay. No, we didn't do any of that stuff. And I'm sure the person that installed it didn't mean to have a big old leak or any of that stuff. But this is what happens when, uh, you know, someone who hasn't had training, hasn't had certifications, hasn't had a lot of stuff, 
goes to install something because uh, they sell this particular brand at Home Depot. Anybody can buy it. And then anybody can install it. And this is what happens when anybody does something. So anyways, good, uh, good information. Don't want to keep everybody all day. Thanks for being here, everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, we'll see you next week for Fireplace Friday. Be safe.